Okay, now for our last topic on acids and bases, and this is salt hydrolysis, and essentially this says that when you have a neutralization reaction, um, you're not exactly, you're not always going to have the uh, resulting solution be neutral. It's not always going to be that your acid and base completely neutralize. Sometimes it'll be more acidic, sometimes it'll be more basic, and it's all dependent upon what your parent acid and parent base are of that salt. So. We know our neutralization reaction is going to be an acid plus a base yields a salt plus water. And we can even, um, let's just remind ourselves of a couple things, that as far as the acid goes, it's the anion of the salt that is, um, comes from the acid, and for your base, it's the cation of the salt. So what that means is that Here's your anion for your acid. Here's your cation for your base. Those are the two things that form your salt. And remember to always write your positive first, your cation first, then your anion. And then, of course, your hydrogen and your hydroxide from those two form your water. So we can, um, there are going to be a, a few different scenarios that can take place. We're going to be looking at three. There's actually a fourth, but it won't be something that we deal with in this class. You can have a strong acid and a strong base come together. And if that's the case, then you get a completely neutral salt. In other words, the pH will be 7. So if we go back to this example that we saw the other day, if you had all of your ions break apart, it completely ionized, that's what happens with strong acids and bases, then all of those ions end up getting paired up and forming water, so everything's going to be neutral. But if that's not the case, let's say that you have a strong acid that all breaks apart into its hydrogen ions and the other anion, and a weak base. It doesn't break apart. You have fewer hydroxide ions because it does not all dissociate or ionize. So because of that, because you have fewer hydroxide ions, when you put it together, you see that there are still going to be some leftover, you have extra hydrogen ions there because um, that ionized completely, but the base did not ionize completely. So it would be more acidic, meaning that the pH would be less than 7. And then our last situation would be the opposite case, where your base ionizes completely, breaks apart into its hydroxide ions, plus that cation, but your acid does not because it's weak. So in that case, you have fewer hydrogen ions, so you have a whole lot of leftover hydroxide ions in this case. So with all of those extra hydroxide ions, it's going to be a basic solution. It's going to have a pH greater than 7. And then the last one we will not look at is a weak acid, weak base situation. So that will be beyond this course. Okay, you have a little um, chart there. I'm just going to do a few of these. But what you need to do is figure out the parent acid and the strength of that acid, the parent base, and the strength of that base. And we should be able to predict what type of solution that would form. Would it be acidic or basic, or would it be neutral? So if you had your typical Joe generic salt, NaCl, and we were to figure out our parent acid, on this one, let's just go ahead and label a couple things. Remember that always on your salt, this is your positive ion, this is your negative ion. So if you think back to what we just said in that first slide there, or second slide, that positive is going to come from your base. That's your cation is from your base, whereas your anion is from your acid. So that's what you need to remember. And all of these are going to be Arrhenius acids and bases, meaning your acids start with hydrogen ions and your bases end with hydroxide ions. So your parent acid, hopefully you can look at this and see chloride ions, that's going to mean it comes from hydrochloric acid, plus one, minus one, so that's how you'd write it. And as far as your parent base goes, it's sodium and your hydroxide, plus one, minus one, so that's going to be NaOH. And then as far as our strengths go, we know that hydrochloric acid is a strong acid and sodium hydroxide is a strong base. So based on this, if you have all of the ions ionizing completely, you would expect your pH to be equal to 7.
Well, we can actually test this because we have indicators and something that we commonly use for this type of lab or this demonstration would be a universal indicator, which just changes these different colors based upon the pHs. So in this example of a pH of 7, we would expect a green color. So let's check this through the magic of technology here. If I were to throw sodium chloride into water and have an indicator in there, I would test it. And sure enough, it would be equal to 7, and I would see it turn this beautiful green color. So let's do another one. Um, sodium carbonate. In this example, we know sodium is going to go f uh, is going to be the cation from our base, and uh, chloride is going to be the anion. I'm sorry, carbonate is going to be the anion from our acid. So here we would have hydrogen combined with carbonate, and you need to be thinking about charges. That's plus one minus two. So H2CO3 is how you write carbonic acid. And then as far as our base goes, it's the same one, sodium hydroxide. So when you think about strengths, carbonic acid, we know that's going to be a weak acid, whereas sodium hydroxide is a strong base. So we have a lot more hydroxide ions in there, so that sounds like it's going to be a basic solution. In other words, it's going to have a pH greater than 7. So we jump ahead to this next one, sodium carbonate, and we expect it to have a pH of greater than 7. According to our indicator, we're going to expect it to be in the, the dark blues or purplish range. So when we check it, we see, sure enough, it's greater than 7, and it turns this lovely dark purplish blue color. And I will do a couple more of these, and then I'm going to leave it up to you to finish the rest. So. Um, let me just grab a couple. Let's try, let's do zinc sulfate number six. So in this case, we know it's going to be sulfuric acid, H2SO4, and we know it's going to be zinc hydroxide plus two minus one. So in this case, we would have a strong acid and a weak base. So we would expect the opposite here. We would expect to have more hydrogen ions, meaning it's going to be acidic. Therefore, the pH is less than 7. And I really think that I'm going to stop right there. You can just go through that same thought process on the rest of these.